Hi, my name is Jody Baker, and this lecture that you're about to watch is produced using Firefox and ScreenFlow, which is a video capture tool, and I'm recording on a blue Yeti microphone. This video lecture will walk you through the steps for embedding a direct link to full text articles from one of the library's electronic resources into your Moodle course. Now you've probably been struggling with the need to comply with university copyright policy and the law on the one hand, and the more immediate practical challenges of teaching and delivering resources to students in the most efficient way possible, and trying to keep it as simple as possible. As Emily Carr and other campuses begin to phase out the traditional course pack, and we all know how onerous the process of putting together a course pack has become in recent years. But more and more we're going to rely on delivering resources like readings, images, and video to students online. And we've all been uploading PDF files of our readings and JPEGs of images we're working with because it's the simplest and most efficient way to get material to students. And uploading PDF files is really easy and really simple. But actually complying with copyright has gotten a lot easier and I'm going to show you how to link to articles in a way that complies with copyright law. It's just as easy as uploading a PDF file. Now book chapters, they're a separate issue. And the policy there is to simply ask permission of the author. And word on the street is, is that you will get permission nine times out of ten. So just send the author an email and ask for permission to use a chapter from his or her book in your courses. In order to ensure that you are complying to copyright law and the license agreements that Emily Carr has with our electronic content distributors, you are required to embed links to content rather than an actual PDF of the article. So first, you have to become comfortable locating an article in an online journal with one of the library's electronic resources. And the library provides access to several full text databases. The library's electronic databases are accessible through the library website and are available both on and off campus to all faculty and students. So I'm at the library website now and in my other tab I have the course that you're currently in. And I'm going to take two resources from two databases from the library website and put them here in the resources module. So the first thing we do is go to the library databases and you can click on all which gives you access to all the databases and search that way or you can go to a specific database and we're going to go to the art full text. So first you'll click the connect button to connect to the database and you come up with a search. So I'm going to look for articles on online art pedagogy. And click start. So we have a number of articles and I'm going to get this one, Preparing Art Teachers to Teach in New Digital Landscapes. So I'll click on the link and there are two buttons on this page for that article which I care about and one is the citation link here in the corner and the other is click to copy the PDF full text article link. That's the persistent URL or sometimes called the permalink. So first we'll get the citation and in this database it gives you several options for citation and since Emily Carr tends to use MLA I will take the MLA citation and I can just simply copy and then I'll go to the resources page and add a resource. I'm going to add a bibliography as a page. Okay. 
and I'll just paste it into the content section. And there it is in MLA. So now I'm going to go back and get the persistent URL. And I'll just right click this link, copy the link location. I'll then highlight the title of the article, click the link, insert link button, and paste the link into the URL box. You can have the target as open in this window or open in a new window. The decision is yours. So there it is and I'll click Save and Display. And there it is on the bibliography page that I just created. So all I have to do now is click on this link and it will open. So I've retrieved this article and complied with copyright. And all my students now can retrieve this article and you're complying with copyright. So it's very simple and very straightforward. I use Skim for my PDF reader and I like Skim because it's open source and it allows you to highlight and underline text. You can underline text, you can highlight text, and if it's a PDF that's an image of the text as opposed to the actual text, you can highlight using boxes, like so. So consider using Skim as an alternative to Adobe Reader. Returning to the library homepage, we'll search another database to find a full text article. This time we'll use JSTOR. and we'll connect to the JSTOR database and we'll search for art history online pedagogy and here's the article we want Digital Culture and the Practices of Art and Art History. And here's a web version of the article. And we want to click on the View Citation link. And this gives us both the citation and the persistent URL, or in this case it's called the article stable URL. So I'll simply grab this text. Unfortunately, in JSTOR, we can't choose between MLA or APA formatting. I'll go back to my bibliography page, clicking the edit button. I'll add the new citation and make it conform to MLA format. There, now that it's in MLA format, I'll return to the JSTOR citation and copy the article stable URL. Again, highlight the title. and drop in the stable or persistent link. You'll notice the URL has the phrase EZ proxy. That ensures that the PDF is obtained through the library and through our electronic content distributors. With the JSTOR database, the link takes you back to the JSTOR citation where students can then sign in through the library and download the PDF from that page.
and there it is. So that's how to get resources to your students and comply with copyright policy and law. Thank you.